Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Doerr for the condition of the month for functional soft tissue. Uh, we're dealing with Achilles tendinopathy uh, is our first video, and our, we're going to go through our history and diagnosis uh, evaluation associated with this. So obviously within the history of an Achilles tendinopathy, one of the things that we're going to commonly hear is patients going to have pain associated with running activities or jumping activities. Uh, they usually complain at, after uh, immobility. Um, they've been sleeping their first step in the morning or if they've been sitting for a long time and that first step getting warmed up after they get out of a chair uh, or the car, things along those lines are usually going to be telltale signs in the history of an Achilles tendinopathy, obviously within the Achilles tendon region. Uh, there should be some palpable tenderness um, during palpation of the Achilles tendon, and we can go through things like manual muscle testing to see if we're provoking Achilles tendon pain. So with the leak completely straight, we're testing a little bit more of a gas rock and we can have the patient push down into our hand, see if that provokes pain. If we're looking more for the soleus, we can bend the knee, take the gas rock out, and have her push down. And again, I'm doing this in a seated um, environment just because of the way we're shooting this video, but obviously there's a number of ways we can do this prone. Uh, and we can also then go from the simplicity of just a simple manual muscle test to going to weight bearing. And if we have our patient stand up, we'll have her do something like toe raises. So starting with both legs, We'll have her go up 10 times on her toes to see if we can provoke the Achilles tendon pain that way. And if that doesn't really provoke it, uh, we can shift over to a single leg and then have her do single leg lifts and see if we can provoke pain that way. Uh, we may also see, depending on the age of our patient, some of those fibrous nodules that will develop on the Achilles tendon showing some chronic injury that's actually um, remodeled over time and created this big collagen ball of scar tissue around the Achilles tendon where the injury has been and it's actually gone through a remodeling process creating more of a granulation tissue around the injury. Um, another thing that we can look at associated with uh, diagnosis of the Achilles tendon, again, looking at kin kinetic chain evaluation, would be associated with sagittal plane mechanics with uh, our patient. And we have you sit down one more time. We want to look to make sure that this patient has proper dorsiflexion. So one of the things that we'll look at is just taking in a neutral foot position, bringing that foot up to make sure that she's actually able to clear uh, neutral position and get to maybe 10 or 15 degrees more of dorsiflexion. Uh, if you notice that somebody is really stuck at either neutral or below neutral, you've got to remember that this patient is always going to be stuck in a plantar flex position, and that's going to chronically shorten the Achilles tendon. Obviously, somebody who wears heels, this is the same scenario that we'll have to deal with, is a person wearing heels all the time is going to chronically shorten that Achilles tendon as well. Uh, when we have this type of a situation, we also want to check not only the dorsiflexion, but for first toe extension. So we're going to look for how it's limitous or how it's rigid in situations. And especially in our runners, we want to see when that toe hits the ground or the ball of foot hits the ground, is that person still able to extend their toe? So I've used my thumb to block the first metatarsal phalangeal joint, and then I'm just checking for extension. And you can see as we test her, she really doesn't have any extension. She can't get past neutral once I block that, which would be the same as if the foot is contacting the ground. However, if we take that pressure off, we notice she gets great extension. So if the foot hits the ground and she loses the ability to extend the toe, we have to make up that motion elsewhere. So that's everything from adding extra pronation in, tibial torsion, and that in itself can create enough kinetic chain dysfunction that's also going to create more of our Achilles tendon dysfunction that needs to be addressed in order to help resolve this, especially long term for our runners or our athletes. Other things that we want to make sure that we look at is we can look at the SFMA evaluation and using that upper tier evaluation, something as simple as looking at the overhead squat and again, without looking tremendously into the kinetic chain, if you notice on an overhead squat that the heels come off the ground, right away that's telling you that they have tight calves, which could also play a role in the Achilles tendon. So recapping, if we look at our history, uh, again, a history of somebody who's a runner or a jumper or something along those lines. Uh, can be obviously a non-athlete. It's not too unusual to see Achilles tendon injuries on non-athletes, but within that athletic population, obviously the running sports is pretty common. We want to make sure that they have uh, that history also would go with somebody who's immobile for a period of time, whether it's sitting, driving, or sleeping, that first step may be uncomfortable, uh, as well as especially a history with the runners, people who are doing hill workouts or speed workouts. The hill workout is a complete eccentric load because of the constant dorsiflex position of the person's foot while they're running uphill. And speed workouts is a full concentric, more ballistic activity because they're up on the balls of their feet doing their sprints. So those are things in the history that we may notice associated with Achilles tendinopathy. And again, in evaluation, it may be anything from manual muscle tests of the gastroc or the soleus to create pain. We want to look for full dorsiflexion as well as toe extension, satchel plane mechanics. 
We may see something in our SFMA, like the heels coming off the ground associated with our overhead squat. And then again, manual muscle test of either gastroc or soleus producing pain, or toe raises, either double leg or single leg, that may also produce the pain. So that kind of summarizes our history and diagnosis associated with Achilles tendinopathy. And this is our uh, video for that for functional soft tissue. And once again, I'm Dr. Gregory Dorff.